about uh, yesterday we, we uh, started speaking about uh, coding the sources. Uh, and uh, uh, so I have defined uh, some, uh, uh, I have given some definition, for, for instance, what, what is the glossary of the code? What is a, a coding? So a coding is a map that maps the uh, symbols you have uh, in uh, the, your source emits into words on the, on the alphabet, written on the alphabet that the uh, transmission uh, and the machine can understand. So for instance, X can be uh, uh, normal letters, uh, normal alphabet, and A can be uh, the uh, uh, zero one uh, alphabet understood by the machine. Uh, and uh, I have defined yesterday what is the code. The, uh, the code ca can be extended to uh, by concatenation to consider not only single letters of the uh, emitted by the source, but even arbitrary words as me, uh, emitted by the, the source just by concatenating them. Uh, something I did not explain yesterday is that these kind of codes are not meant to uh, do anything you like. For instance, this kind of code is not meant to do cryptography, for instance. The, the idea is that when you receive a word alpha here in this, in this set, you must be able to recover the symbol that has been used to produce this, this word. So this is a very important uh, property of the, uh, of the codes. And uh, so here is the example I gave yesterday. I, I, I guess you, you understand this example. I have not to go through again. And now uh, let's say something about the codes. So a code is non-singular if uh, the function encoding uh, uh, symbols from, of the source into words in the machine alphabet is injective. That means if two uh, code words are the same, they must come from the same uh, uh, symbol emitted by the machine. So I take the contrapos uh, contraposition of this, uh, of this uh, 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 implication. If Cx is equal to Cx prime, that means that x must be equal to x prime. Uh, the uh, code, uh, it should be uh, named uniquely decodable if not only the code itself, but even its extension to uh, arbitrary words uh, of symbols of the source is, uh, remains injected. And uh, the, it will be instantaneous if no word of the glossary uh, is prefix of another word of the glossary. And so these uh, are uh, uh, stringent, more stringent and stringent conditions about codes. And so you have, uh, if I denote by uh, insta C instantaneous, C uniquely decoded, C non-singular, the sets of these codes, they have these uh, inclusions. And of course, uh, all of them are included in this set of codes. And now I give an example. I give an example. So suppose that we have four uh, symbols, one, two, three, four emitted by the source, and uh, you wish to encode them into uh, uh, zero one uh, alphabet. So for instance, one, one code you can use is just uh, one and two map to zero and three and four map to one. Uh, obviously this code is not good because this code, code is, not, is, is singular because C1 is not injected. Uh, you have uh, here zero, zero, but this zero comes from one, this zero comes from two. So you cannot invert this code. Uh, C2 is non-singular, but is not uniquely decodable. Uh, you see that uh, if, I'm, uh, if I look at the inverse image of zero, one, zero, then, uh, I can produce this uh, word uh, different ways. 
So one way is to, to, to concatenate the code for three, it's zero one. And the code for one is zero. So I get zero one zero. Uh, I can of course obtain this uh, word just by, by two. And also I can obtain this word by uh, one, four, because one will be zero and four will be one zero. So the, the, net, uh, the net effect will be uh, zero one zero. So this is not uniquely the code. And so this code is also not very good because uh, I cannot insert. Yeah. C3 is uniquely decodable, but is not, uh, is not uh, instantaneous because the code word 11 is prefix of the code word 110. But nevertheless, there is no ambiguity. Can, I, can, uh, uh, I can correctly uh, correctly decode the uh, uh, word alpha to get the uh, original message. And of course, C4 is the best one. This is an instantaneous code. But the, the two last columns are good codes. Now you uh, uh, know already uh, a code that does not uh, fall in the good uh, situation here. And there is a, a, a very uh, precise uh, reason why it's not like that. So this code is the genetic code. Uh, so uh, the, uh, uh, the, the cell is uh, uh, the, the function, one of the functions of the cell is to produce, uh, to produce uh, pro proteins. And the proteins are constructed out of, of uh, uh, amino acids. So there are 20 amino acids, one to 20, and the, the, last, the two last ones are just stop symbols, but they are considered as, as 21st and 22nd amino acid. So the, uh, uh, the uh, set A I have to, to, to use is this set of letters. So the set A is a 22 uh, element set. Now, uh, you know that uh, on the DNA or RNA uh, sequence, there are, uh, these are sequences of, of repetitions of, of uh, four letters, A, C, G, T. Or, uh, so that means that uh, I have, uh, from, the, uh, from this side, I have 22, from the other, I have only four. So four, it's not enough. So in fact, the, um, uh, the, the DNA is read not single by single basis, but uh, groups of three. So codons, what is called codons, are uh, 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 strings of three So basis of, 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 uh, of the, uh, uh, so uh, uh, now uh, you see that three letters uh, of the basis. And so basis is uh, in, in the set A, sorry, A, C, G, and T. So there are four different letters. So we have three syntax of, of three of four letters. So it, it makes you, 64 elements in this uh, codon set. So you have to consider the 64 codons as the set X. So the uh, original set is not ACGT, but is, uh, the, uh, the elements of X are synonyms of three, uh, of, of three letters. So X is, are the 64 codons. And so the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, genetic code, uh, so here uh, U is, you can consider that U is T. So uh, depending on whether you, you are looking on the uh, DNA or RNA, uh, the uh, fourth basis is either uh, thymin or uh, uracil, so that's the difference. But this is ju just the same. And so you see that uh, now, uh, if I uh, look, for instance, how to 
encode the amino acid leucine, I have to use C, U, and then all of these possibilities give, so this is the codon. So there are four codons give uh, leucine. And so you see that uh, this code is, uh, is uh, strongly singular. So I mean, any, uh, any uh, amino acid can be produced by, by uh, different codons. Uh, the reason is very simple. Nobody has to uh, 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 translate back a sequence of amino acids into a DNA because uh, this would be a very bad, it, it, it should have a very bad uh, biological uh, uh, consequence because in that case, proteins could influence the, uh, the uh, genetic content of the cell. And this is of course, uh, uh, very uh, uh, not not uh, not even thought in in in, in biology. So it's it's uh, it's to be uh, the the genetic code must be protected against attacks of of uh, outside attacks. So that's the reason why uh, the uh, code is not. There is no reason that the code to be non singular. Moreover, uh, the uh, the uh, letters here. Uh, I, I just use letters, but in fact, they are not letters. They are just uh, macromolecules, chemicals with very precise stereo, stereo, uh, uh, stereochemical uh, uh, conformation. And uh, when uh, they match on the uh, DNA strand, they must fit together. So since they must fit together, uh, uh, the, you have to pay some energy to, to, to let them fit together. And so uh, that means that, for instance, if I have an U here, it could be uh, thermodynamically more, uh, uh, more uh, uh, favorable to have then an A uh, than a G. That means that this, the next codon on the uh, DNA should be different. So that that, that's to imply that the codons are not just IID variables. They are not independent and identically distributed variables. The codons follow some precise uh, prob probabilistic distribution that is not even Markovian. It's much more uh, 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 depending on the previous letters you have, you have encountered. So that's the, the, the reason you have this uh, redundancy of uh, the code. Another situation that I shall not speak about in this, uh, in this course, uh, where uh, redundancy and not uh, singularity of the code is interesting, is when you like to do uh, cryptography. In that case, uh, you, uh, uh, the uh, singularity of the code is a, uh, a character that you are looking for. You are looking for codes that cannot be inverted uniquely. So uh, I, I close the parenthesis that I continue with the, the codes. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? In the room or in the remote participants? No, okay. Now, uh, so, so here I concentrate on codes that must be inverted. So these are codes used in uh, communication. And of course, the, uh, as I, I told you, uh, the unique decodabil decodability of the code is an, an important character. So I have to, uh, to have uh, conditions under which uh, a code is uniquely decodable. So first, uh, if a, a is a finite alphabet that I, I call uh, with capital A, with capital A, I denote the cardinality of the alphabet. And uh, I have a family of uh, integers. Uh, if this family verifies this uh, inequality, I say that the family fulfills the Crafts inequality. 
Uh, now, uh, the theorem is the following. If I have a, a, a code X from X to uh, the words in, uh, uh, on the alphabet A, this code is, if the code is instantaneous, the family of the lengths of the code words fulfills the Crafts inequality. That means uh, the sum of A minus Cx when I sum on X is less than one. Conversely, if I have a sequence of integers that fulfill the Crafts inequality, there exists an instantaneous code such that uh, the uh, length of the code words, the lengths of the code words, have this pre-assigned family of, of, uh, of L as, as, as lengths. So the proof is uh, very, very easy, and I give it here. So suppose that uh, uh, I wish to, to, to show that uh, the, uh, if the code is instantaneous, then it must fulfill the craft's condition. So uh, the uh, words of a star have different length that are, uh, that are uh, code words have different lengths. If I look at the uh, maximum length, If I look at the maximal length, then I can, uh, uh, that means that the, the code words uh, will be words of length at least, uh, at, at most capital L. That means I can represent uh, the set of possible words as a tree whose uh, last finite tree, whose last, whose last generation will be capital L. Now, uh, suppose that uh, uh, I have uh, already uh, order, order, ordered the, uh, uh, the set X, that means I have X1 less than X2, less than X3, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, if, if it's not ordered, I can always order a finite set just by, uh, artificially. So suppose that I have placed the word, the code word for C of X1. This is the code word for uh, X1. So this will be a word in, in this set. So it will be someplace on the tree. But if C is an instantaneous code, that means that this word cannot appear as a prefix of any other word. That means that once I have placed this word here, I must exclude all this subtree from possible positions of the other word. So I have uh, excluded, uh, in, in that way, I have excluded two to the power, uh, sorry, a to the power L, so here I have A equal to two, but anyway, here is A, L minus uh, uh, L of X1. I have excluded all this. Uh, excluded positions at the uh, last, uh, the last uh, generation. Now suppose that I, I place the second word. Uh, the second word can be here. For instance, suppose that I have placed the, the word there. That means I have again 
to exclude uh, a to the power r l minus l x2, uh, uh, again excluded. And uh, in fact, uh, I, uh, if, if I, uh, if I uh, uh, have to be able to place the code on this, uh, uh, on this tree, there, uh, the uh, total number of excluded words cannot exceed the total number of the last generation. Otherwise, there are, there are not enough place to put the code. So the condition is that the sum of A L minus L X I for I uh, in, the, in the family of the code words cannot exceed the total number of, of, uh, of nodes at this last generation cannot exceed. So cannot exceed A to the power L because the, the last generation has A to the power L nodes. So simplifying by that, you see that this means that the sum of uh, A to the power minus LXI is less than one. So this is the condition. Uh, so an instantaneous code must uh, uh, verify the, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, uh, Crafts condition. And uh, now for, from the, for the other way, it's just the same thing. I have the sequence of, of lengths. I order again the sequence of lengths. So I have uh, L1. Uh, L1 sh should be, so that's the, that way. In this way, I have ordered L1 less than L2, etc. I suppose that the uh, else, the lengths are the, the uh, integers L are uh, already ordered. Uh, so uh, I place uh, in the L1 generation anywhere, uh, I, I place anywhere I have maybe, let's see. So I have again the tree. So suppose that L1 is one, I have placed some, uh, uh, in, in this generation, everywhere, uh, where, where I like this, uh, uh, and I assign the uh, code word for uh, the uh, 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 word X1, for the symbol X1 at this place. Now, uh, this uh, will exclude a certain number of, of, uh, of vertices at the end genera last generation. But since uh, crafts, in crafts inequality is fulfilled, that means the, uh, there are remaining uh, positions available. Uh, so for uh, uh, if I uh, am to place L2, I try to, uh, uh, I, uh, Choose, I, I, I choose a, 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 a vertex at the, at the end, and then I place at the generation L2, CF X2. And of course, this excludes me all this, this excludes me also this, the graph inequality is still fulfilled. So I can, I can already find, I can always find uh, some uh, position where I can place CX3 and so on. Is it clear? Have you understood the, the construction? No answer. Now, uh, the... Uh, ah, sorry, uh, Dimitri, we were muted. So they tell yes, they understood. Understood, okay. Because uh, since the beginning, we are muted, finally. When we speak, we don't, you, you, you don't uh, listen. It's good, they understood. They understood, okay. Okay, now uh, uh, some words about optimality of the code. So the Crafts inequality uh, guarantees that there is an existence of an instantaneous code uh, whose lengths of, uh, of code words are preset to the lengths LX. 
nevertheless, uh, the, uh, the code, uh, you see in the construction uh, I, I did of the code, I can, uh, any, any permutation should be acceptable. But uh, if the LX are not constant and the underlying probability of X is not uniform, there exist codes uh, that are better than, than others in the sense that the average length of the code should be shorter for, uh, uh, for some choices. Uh, that means that the Kraft's inequality is not a, a constructive uh, result, it's only an existential result. It says that there exist, there exist uh, uh, good code. But to get op optimal code, I must minimize the average length of the code. And so the average length is uh, the uh, weighted sum of the uh, lengths with the probability, the underlying probability under the constraint that uh, these numbers LX must verify the Kraft's inequality. So this is the constraint. So the traditional method, method to solve this problem is just uh, using Lagrange multipliers. That means for every uh, family, so if I denote by L uh, uh, bold, the uh, family of all, of all the uh, lengths, uh, the, uh, there is a function on, the, uh, on this family that is the average length plus lambda, so this is the Lagrange multiplier, the uh, uh, constraint, the, uh, the uh, uh, Kraft's inequality constraint. And on deriving, we get this, uh, on deriving by LX, so this is uh, elementary, we get this equation. If you saturate this equation, uh, for uh, fulfilling the, uh, the uh, for satu saturating the, uh, the graphs inequality, you get a lambda and uh, then uh, you can uh, replace and then you, uh, so lambda here, lambda here will be one over uh, log A. And uh, uh, finally, if you uh, uh, consider the optimal length, this optimal length will be given, uh, so I, uh, optimal length, I, its length must be in quotation. I explain you why. Optimal length should be this number here. So with lambda, uh, uh, so px, essentially. And that means that uh, Lx is just the logarithm of px. The problem is that L star has no particular reason to be an integer. So for instance, suppose that I am in uh, uh, cardinality two for, uh, for the set. Uh, if the, the uh, probabilities of uh, appearance are not powers of two, there is no reason that the logarithm of Px is an integer. So these numbers L star are not necessarily integers. <coughs> uh, Nevertheless, uh, 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 Shannon proved the uh, following theorem. For every instantaneous code uh, on a set uh, with cardinality, uh, on, a, on an alphabet with cardinality A, a uh, the uh, Average uh, the uh, uh, mean the mean length of the code uh, exceeds the uh, uh, the uh, uh, entropy of X. So the uh, uh, a the subscript a here means that a h a is uh, minus so, sum of p uh, x logarithm at base a of p x. So it's not logarithm two, it's logarithm A. That's the meaning of, of the uh, subscript A here. Uh, and uh, this inequality holds uh, as equality if uh, it happens that for all X's, the uh, probabilities are inverse powers of the uh, cardinality of A uh, to some uh, uh, integer. So 
uh, this has, does not happen in general. So it is a, a, a condition on the uh, probabilities. So uh, the, the, the proof is uh, elementary. So you introduce uh, a new probability vector R in that way. And uh, you compute the uh, average, uh, the average length minus the, uh, the uh, entropy, then this is the expression, just replace. You arrive uh, at this expression if you use the uh, vector R, it's just uh, elementary operations. I don't have uh, to spend the time on them. And you see here, you recognize that here I get the uh, uh, Kullback Leibler, Leibler contrast for vectors P and R. And here I get uh, the logarithm of one over uh, the uh, sum appearing in the Kraft's inequality. But this uh, is always positive because uh, D, the, 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 uh, the uh, Kullback's Leibler contrast is always positive. And since the, uh, uh, the Kraft's inequality is verified, uh, the uh, in logarithm of the inverse will be uh, always positive. <clears throat> so that that's, uh, gives you the, uh, the inequality appearing in the Shannon's theory. Uh, and uh, now uh, if uh, the uh, uh, X has a random variable, is a random variable with low P, then there exists an instantaneous code such that the average length of this code is uh, uh, between the entropy and the entropy plus one. So uh, again, the, the, uh, the minimizers coming from the uh, Lagrange multiplier method are not integers. So L star are not necessarily integers. Nevertheless, if I am looking at the, at the interval uh, L star, L star plus one, this is an, inter, an interval of length one. So it contains necessarily a, a unique integer. Uh, I call Lx this unique integer. Is it clear or say, say it again? Students. Reply. Yes, yes. It's okay. So uh, now, the, uh, if I'm looking at the family of LX, this family fulfills necessarily the Kraft's inequality because, because of this. Hence, the, by Kraft's theorem, there exists an instantaneous code admitting the family of L as lengths of code words. And uh, from this inequality, so I, uh, I, I recall you that uh, this is just minus logarithm of Px, uh, uh, multiplying by Px and summing up over x, I get that the entropy will be uh, less than the average length and less than uh, the entropy plus one. Uh, so the, uh, the entropy and the uh, optimal and the length uh, the average length of the code are within uh, one unit. Uh, I mean, they are very close to, to one another. <clears throat> and uh, uh, you see that, uh, you remember that the uh, instantaneous code codes are a subset of the uh, uniquely decodable codes. So since the set of uniquely decodable codes is larger than the set of instantaneous codes, you can ask whether this, the uh, codes that are uniquely uh, decodable and uh, verify the, uh, the Kraft's inequality are better than the uh, instantaneous code. Uh, the answer is no, because uh, Macmillan's theorem says that if every uh, uh, uniquely decodable code verifies the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Kraft's inequality, and converse, conversely, if you have a sequence of, uh, if you have a family of, of uh, integers fulfilling Kraft, then there, is ex there exists a, uh, instant a uniquely de uh, decodable code such that it, it admits lengths of this size. 
And uh, so that gives you, uh, I, 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 I don't, don't, don't prove this, the, the, the theorem is, uh, it, it's easy, but I, I, I don't want to spend time on this. But more, I uh, would like to, uh, to give you an algorithm. There are many other algorithms, but I give you just one algorithm of how to produce a, a unique, uh, a, a, how do you produce optimal codes? Let me see. Uh, so the, the uh, algorithm goes like that. Uh, you, uh, at, at the input of the algorithm, you need, you need the probability vector P. And uh, th at the end of the algorithm, you will have a forest having two trees. So a, a forest is just a, a family of trees. So the forest at the end will have two trees. And the, go, the, the algorithm go, goes like that. I fix first M to be the, the dimension of P. And uh, I start by the empty forest. Now, uh, the, uh, sorry, just, just uh, uh, to say you what is a, a binary tree. So a binary tree, a binary tree has zero or two uh, children at every node. At every node has either zero or two children. You cannot have uh, one child. child. <coughs> uh, now, uh, I, I start, so the, uh, the uh, uh, I, so I will be I, I, I can identify the, uh, this, the set I have to encode uh, by I. Now, uh, uh, a, a binary tree is always represented in the following way. If I have a binary tree, I can represent it as a triple R, T, L, T, R. So R will be the root of the tree and uh, TL is the uh, left, left subtree, and R is the right subtree. Uh, these subtrees can be empty. So uh, at the first step, identify uh, the elements here with some bina uh, 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 binary trees that are uh, just trivial. They just contain only the roots. And then uh, I assign the, uh, a, a weight equal to the probability vector, and uh, I add to the forest all these trees. Now I group together, uh, I, 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 be between all these trees, there are some that have the minimal weight. I, I choose the T1 and T2, the uh, lowest lying trees in, in terms of weight. And at the next, next step, I amalgamate them. Uh, so I, 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 add, I, I add the new vertex uh, as the root of the amalgamation. And uh, uh, I add this new uh, tree. I uh, subtract the original trees T1 and T2 until uh, I arrive at the forest of cardinality 2. So to understand the, uh, the algorithm, you have to go through an example. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, totally. So I give you an exercise. I'll, I'll explain uh, to you uh, how to, uh, uh, to uh, the, the first two questions. Uh, well, the, se the second question, by the way, the second question is uh, just the, uh, the uh, uh, is to run through the previous algorithm. There is a question. Is there a question? No. No. Uh, so uh, uh, here I have, I, I come back. So I have here. A set of of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, size five. And as vector here, I'm using 
uh, one half one four one eight. So at the first step, I have a, a forest that is composed by just the roots. They are uh, binary, trivial binary trees with zero uh, children. So that's the forest at the, uh, at, at the first step. Now, uh, the, uh, the uh, two uh, trees with the smallest weight are D and T. So in the next step, in the next step, I leave the other, the other trees like as they were, as they were, and I amalgamate the two. So I have a new ve uh, uh, vertex. Uh, I call it D, E, and now uh, E. So I, I have now a forest composed by four uh, binary trees instead of five. Uh, so the weights for this have not changed, but the weight for, for this one has, has changed. And this now has weight one eighth because it's the amalgamation of two weights, one sixteenth. Uh, now, if I'm looking uh, at the uh, second, uh, uh, second generation, I must uh, uh, look at the, uh, uh, I must choose the lowest line in terms of weight uh, binary trees of F1. And these are C and D. These are the two, uh, because here is one half eight, and here is one fourth, and here is one half. So I, in the next generation, I must, so I leave uh, A and B as they were. And now I amalgamate the uh, two, two, two trees here. So C, uh, C, D, E, sorry. And here I have C and here I have D, D, E. And now uh, the new weight will be one fourth, one fourth, one half. And now again, I continue. And then at the end, I have a amalgamation of B and C, D, E with the weight one half, one half. And this will give me the forest, the final forest F3. I write here, it will be A and then uh, B, C, D, E with B and then C, D, E. And beneath, below CD, you have all this forest. All this tree, oh, sorry. Is it clear? Is it clear how to do? Yes. Okay. Now you see that I have a code because uh, I, if I decide, for instance, to, to assign zero to the left and to one to the right, then uh, uh, if uh, I'm looking at this uh, code, uh, I, I'll have uh, A, B, C, D, E, and here the code will be zero. For B, it will be uh, one. Uh, and then uh, where is B? Uh, B will be here, one, zero. C will be one, uh, one, zero. Uh, D will be one, uh, one, one, zero. And E will be one, 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 one. So you see that I have constructed a, an instantaneous code uh, in the sense that no code word is a prefix of, the, of another. And if I, have, uh, uh, if I have the extension of this code uh, to uh, uh, the uh, uh, X 
plus, then uh, I can immediately uh, decode and get the original word. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, so I leave you as homework the uh, uh, other exercise, the other questions. So I, 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 I answered the, well, the, the, the first question is, is elementary, you just have to, to compute uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, entropy of this vector is, is nothing. So I have answered this second question. You have to ask, to answer the third, fourth, and fifth question. So uh, in particular, uh, this one. So think about that and we'll come back tomorrow. Think about, uh, about this. Okay, uh, so are there any questions? Question? Yes. It's good. It's good? Yes. Okay. So we come to the, uh, uh, now the next topic I should like to, to cover is uh, about uh, the uh, channel coding. So a, a channel is a very general notion. Initially, it was meant to study the transmission of a coded message through a noise medium. Uh, presently is used to mean arbitrary transformation of a word of a finite alphabet to another word of maybe different finite alphabet. For instance, the genetic code I, get, I, I showed you before can be thought as a channel. I, I have a transformation of a word in the alphabet of codons into a, 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 a word in the alphabet of uh, amino acids. So the input must be thought as a random word uh, X on uh, of, of arbitrary length on the alphabet, and the output will be another word of arbitrary length on the alphabet. And uh, the uh, 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 the uh, uh, working of the channel will be encoded into its transmission probability. That is a co the conditional probability of getting output Y, given that the input was X. And here uh, in this lecture, I assume for simplicity, simply there are too many letters. For simplicity, I assume that the input and output words have the same length. And the, uh, that the input symbols are emitted by independent source. So I cannot use uh, this encoding to, uh, to study, for instance, the uh, genetic code, because the uh, letters on the DNA, the, the codons on the DNA are not independent uh, variables. So both, both hypotheses can be relaxed at the price of more complicated formulas. So this is not, this is not, it is only to simplify the presentation. Uh, so, uh, the idea is that uh, to, to transmit one bit of information, I must transport the precise state of a physical system that encodes the bit. And I must do this through a physical medium or process that is the channel. Uh, so the, if the transmission vector is the electric current, so an ideal channel will be an ideal Cooper wire, but a realistic the channel is a Cooper wire with uh, strictly positive resistivity, 
that means the uh, the uh, electric current does not go through unperturbed. It, it, it has some perturbation when it goes through, and uh, the, its value changes. And if the Cooper wire is very long, then the value change a lot. And you can encode something that encoded zero at the beginning must be uh, must encode one at the end, or vice versa. If the uh, transmission vector is a Hertzian beam, the ideal channel is the empty space, but the realistic channel is atmos the atmosphere with the, its turbulences and uh, the perturbation it can go cause to the Hertzian uh, beam. Uh, if the transmission vector is a laser beam, then the uh, again the ideal channel is either uh, empty space or an ideal optical fiber. Uh, but the realistic channel is either uh, the atmosphere or uh, a, a fiber that is not 100% transparent. If you uh, come down to more elementary uh, vectors, for instance, one single photon, uh, if you are doing quantum communication, in that case, it will be just one photon and not a laser beam. Again, it will be the, uh, the empty space or a fiber. And again, the same realistic channel. And if it's DNA, the, uh, the ideal channel is uh, uh, theoretical cellular mitosis and meiosis. But in, in a realistic channel, there are mutations. There are some uh, faults uh, that will appear. So anytime you have a transmission uh, for a realistic system, you have necessarily transmission errors. It's impossible to transmit signals without uh, errors, physical signals. Uh, you can do it on, on paper, but uh, in real life, you will never transmit without errors. Uh, now, uh, here I give a definition of a channel, the Markovian model of the channel. Uh, so sim simplify the village. Uh, so a channel will be a triplet. There is a question. Is there a question? No. So a channel will be a triplet uh, of X is the input. Output. Is that a question? I hear some uh, noise, but. <laughs> <laughs> there is noise added, added by the channel, and I don't understand what happened. So, okay. Okay. So uh, the uh, channel will be the triple of uh, the uh, X is the input alphabet, Y is the output alphabet, and. Uh, Forget about that. P will be uh, uh, go go di directly to this uh, expression. Uh, uh, you have a, a, a P that is a stochastic matrix X Y times stochastic matrix. Problem? Is that a problem? Someone else is unmuted. There seems to be some feedback. It's, it's a little problematic if you are uh, far. So uh, I'm far, and so I cannot, I have not. Ah. Someone, someone is unmuted. Uh, who is unmuted? Participant. What? Uh, Dimitri. Yes. Is there a problem? It's good, it's good, Dimitri. I think there, is, there was some noise, but no, he's muted. The person who did noise. Okay. So it's good. So, uh, 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 so you have uh, you, you have the input alphabet, the output alphabet, a, a transition matrix that is stochastic matrix. That matrix gives you the probability that when the input is equal to X, to have an output equal to Y. And if you have uh, the, uh, an input that has length 
n, that means x, a word of length n. Uh, I, uh, I uh, supposed for simplification that the output will have same length. So y will have uh, same length. And the pro conditional probability will read uh, just the, the product. So here I have, there are the indices y missing. Here is indices y. So uh, maybe uh, give an example to, to, uh, to understand it clearer. Uh, so suppose the uh, first example is uh, the uh, memory, memoryless uh, binary channel. So here I suppose that X and Y are just the binary alphabet. And I have P, a two by two matrix. So here is the, the cardinalities are equal to two. And so the uh, uh, transition matrix will be just a two by two matrix. I, I'm choosing like that. One minus E0, E0, uh, E1, one minus E1. Uh, with uh, E0 and E1 in 0, 1. So what does it mean? It means that uh, when you, you uh, have as input 0, you have uh, a small probability E0 to get one in place. So here is zero, here is one, and zero, one. With, with some small probability E1, well, with some, small, some probability, I didn't say anything about the, the magnitudes of A0 and one, with some probability zero will be changed to one, and with uh, the remaining probability, it, it will be transmitted as zero. And the same thing for the uh, for uh, the input one. If the input is one, with some probability, it will be changed to, into zero, and otherwise, it will be transmitted like that. So, if I'm uh, if I uh, consider now the probability that a, a word of length three so suppose that uh, the channel is fed with the word X that is zero, one, zero. And we get as output one, one, zero. What is the probability here? How I can compute this probability? So you see that uh, here, the, the, uh, the, the first, uh, the first uh, letter of the string zero has been changed into two, one. So it will be zero, one. The second is transmitted without any change, and the third is transmitted without any change. And so it will be uh, E1, uh, the uh, one minus E1, one minus E0. Is it clear? Now uh, the uh, uh, the second example is, is uh, to see to sh show you that the notion of channel is very general. A channel can be thought also as a code. Uh, for instance, if we, if I have x to be a b c d and a to be set zero one, I can have a code x gives a word in, in this alphabet. For instance, I can consider the, the following code. So this is an instantaneous code, can be, can be viewed as uh, a channel
as x y p channel if i am choosing for y not all the letters or all the words of a a plus but uh, only the uh, image of uh, the possible inputs uh, that means y in the in this situation is just the set 0 1 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 1 and so the matrix P in that case will be the uh, stochastic matrix A, B, C, D with 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. That will be the unit matrix. This is a stochastic, this is a stochastic matrix. This is a stochastic, deterministic stochastic matrix. Is it clear? That uh, uh, so, so you see a, a random variable can be thought as a channel, a channel between the. Uh, I have not spoken about omega fp or where the uh, random variables are defined, but uh, uh, but uh, uh, Raphael already spoke about the definition of a random matrix or of a random variable in some abstract space omega with values in x. Uh, in that case, a, a random variable is nothing else than a, a deterministic uh, channel uh, from omega to, to, to x. Now, uh, uh, if uh, the source low, so the, the random variable at the, uh, at the input of the channel is distributed according to uh, probability vector mu, and the channel transmission matrix is the stochastic matrix P, we can compute, of course, the source entropy. This will be uh, minus sum nu x uh, log mu x. The uh, joint input output low. So this is the joint probability of having input x and output y. I call it kappa, the, the, uh, the uh, probability vector, the corresponding probability vector that can be obtained uh, through uh, the expression of new x p x, so you, you see that the the uh, what I did yesterday about uh, Markov chains, I, I I find it again because I have a, a, a stochastic matrix allowing me to pass from input to output. Uh, so uh, since I have uh, since I have since I have the uh, in, uh, the joint law. I can also uh, compute the joint entropy. This will be minus sum, sum of x and y of kappa x y logarithm of kappa x y. Uh, I can uh, compute the output low. This will be the marginal uh, with respect summing up the, uh, the, the input of kappa. And so this will be just what I said yesterday about Markov chain. This will be uh, new. Uh, this will be new p element y, and of course I can uh, compute again the uh, entropy uh, of the output variable, and I can compute conditional entropies and mutual information. And all these quantities are uh, com compared in this following few. Figure. So if the length of this uh, strip is supposed to represent the value of uh, H of the joint entropy, then uh, what remains if I subtract the, uh, the uh, entropy of X will be the conditional entropy Y of X. If I subtract from this, if I subtract for, for, from this H Y, what remains is the conditional entropy X given y and uh, what is in between is just the mutual information now uh, channels uh, arrive in uh, many different uh, variants uh, the uh, uh, channels uh, without lo the lossless channels are those that are character, characterized by the, the fact that the uh, conditional entropy of x give, given y is zero. What does it mean? It means that if the output is known, there is no residual uncertainty on, on input. 
And equivalently, we can show you, you can show that the uh, mutual information is just equal to uh, the uh, uh, uncertainty of, of the input. Uh, the deterministic channels are those that uh, their transmission matrix is deterministic. That means for every X, there is precisely one Y uh, for which the uh, matrix element is equal to one, and for all other elements, it's zero. And if mu is the source low, the, uh, I, I, I can compute the, uh, uh, the, uh, the product, in that, the joint low in that situation will be like that. And uh, it follows that uh, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, deterministic channel is one uh, where the uh, uh, H, the, the uh, entropy of Y given X is equal to zero. <clears throat> and that, that means that the mutual information will be just the uncertainty of Y. That if the input is known, the uh, residual uncertainty on, on the output is, is zero. The noiseless channel is uh, a channel that is lossless and deterministic. So both situations. This so that means that the, the, uh, uh, the mutual information is equal to HX, it's equal to HY. A useless channel is uh, a channel where the uh, mutual information is zero. Uh, if I uh, go through the operation, that means that uh, the uncertainty of X is equal to the conditional uncertainty given, uh, given Y. Uh, and uh, the same with the condition on the other Y. That means the input X and the output Y are independent variables. So uh, uh, in that situation, uh, the channel carries no information. The, the channel acts as a random number generator. You, you uh, knowing X, you learn some, nothing about Y, and knowing Y, you learn uh, nothing about X. And the final uh, class is the symmetric channel. So the symmetric channel comes in this next slide. Uh, if I denote by SN the permutation group on N objects, and X, uh, YP is a memory, less channel with X. Yeah, there's something. Uh, so I, I assume that P is uh, the uh, probability, a probability vector on, on, uh, on Y. And Z is a zero one, uh, is a vector of size X having uh, values between zero and y, but it's not a probability vector, it's an arbitrary vector. I have no normalization for that. And uh, suppose that uh, for every x, there is a permutation on the uh, uh, set of, uh, of uh, cardinality y, such that the, uh, the line x, can be thought as the permutation of a given vector. And Y is uh, the permutation of the vector Z. Then the channel will be, uh, will be uh, called symmetric. In this situation, uh, things are much easier. So the, uh, the, uh, the uh, symmetric channel is a good laboratory to, to test the ideas I have already uh, discussed. So uh, maybe give some examples of, of the, the types of, of channels. And so the, the first channel is the lossless channel, is the one verifying this condition on the uh, conditional entropy. And this implies that the mutual information is just H of X. So suppose that X is X1, Xm, Xm. And suppose that Y is uh, split partitioned in, into M, uh, into uh, uh, M, 
subsets that are not empty. So uh, the uh, I have I have the uh, the uh, uh, stochastic matrix P x y and so if I'm looking now to the probability that y belongs to the set B i given that x is on x y this will be the sum of y in B i probability sorry so this will be probability x i y and this will be equal to one so uh, schematically we can think like things like that so you have x x1 up to xm every every uh, uh, set here every every element here is mapped into different disjoint sets and now you you are looking at the probability that x will be equal to xi given then that y is is belongs to bi in that situation you will get that this will be equal to 1 that means if you know the output uh, the uh, input is determined. Okay. Uh, the second kind of, uh, of uh, channel is the, uh, the uh, deterministic channel. Now, uh, suppose that we have uh, 52, a deck of 52 cards that is considered as the, uh, as the uh, Cartesian product of uh, x1, x2, where x1 is the set 1, 10, a, k, k, 2k, and x2 is the symbols we have on the I don't know how to write this last one. So you understand if you have a, a deck of 32 two cards, any card comes with a number on it and with a, a, a symbol on it. And uh, 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 the, uh, I, I denote by X the uh, random, uh, so this is, will be X. So X will be a random number in X, random card in X, and Y uh, will be, uh, so this will play also the role of Y. Y will be uh, just the sign on it. So you see that uh, the uh, if you uh, uh, if you uh, have X, if you know X, you know everything. You know both the X the X one and X two component of it. So if you know X, you know uh, precisely Y. <clears throat> and so the uh, the uh, mutual information between x and y will be h of y minus h y of x uh, but this of course is zero because uh, once you know x there is no uncertainty on y so this is zero and uh, this will be uh, the uh, logarithm of the cardinality of its uh, uniform distribution uh, this will be the, cardinal, the logarithm of the cardinality, that, so the, it will be two. So this is a deterministic channel. Uh, an example of noiseless channel is uh, something that is uh, lossless and deterministic. That means uh, that you can represent it like that. So A 
is mapped to a prime, uh, b is mapped to b prime, and so on. And there is absolutely no uh, no uh, perturbation if you go uh, in, in that way. So uh, the uh, mutual information will be the uncertainty you have on x and is equal to the uncertainty you have on y. Now I come to the uh, symmetric channel. That's the most in, in, in interesting. So suppose that I have, uh, I, I give you two examples. So P1 is a symmetric channel because it's uh, uh, the, the uh, transmission probability is like that. So here he, x will be, for instance, 0, 1, and y will be a, b, c, d. So they have not the same dimension, but nevertheless. So this is a symmetric channel because uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, vector here is a permutation of the probability vector you get on the second line. And uh, Sorry, here is one sixth. <laughs> Sorry, uh, and now we are, if I'm looking on this vector, this has components one third, one sixth, so it's not a probability vector. But nevertheless, if I look at the other positions, the other position is just a permutation of this vector. So P1 is real, corresponds to a symmetric channel. And I give you a second example. This time will be uh, one, half, one third, one sixth, uh, one sixth, one half, one third, one third, one sixth, one half. Here, uh, uh, the uh, sets X and Y have the same cardinality. And moreover, uh, this, uh, this uh, pro uh, uh, stochastic matrix is doubly stochastic in the sense, not only uh, lines, but also columns. Uh, 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 vectors, but anyway, this again corresponds to a symmetric, uh, to a symmetric channel. So, what will be uh, here the uh, the uh, mutual information? So, mutual information here will be x minus x y given x. Uh, and it will be also equal, sorry, y, not x, y. Uh, so here it will be h, y minus h of p, y, because the, uh, the conditional, conditional uh, entropy of y given x uh, is essentially the, the entropy of this vector, one, one, so this is the, the vector p. This is the, a permutation of this vector, and this is another permutation of this vector. But the permutation does not change the entropy of the vector. Permutation that leaves the, uh, the uh, entropy uh, unchanged. So in that, in that situation, I can compute explicitly the, uh, the uh, uh, mutual information, and it will be given like that. Is it clear? Maybe uh, I, I, I am much slower than uh, I had uh, planned to. Uh, so uh, tomorrow I'll finish about channels. And uh, the, uh, the last uh, topic I, I would like to cover is uh, about Kolmogorov complexity. This is a difficult topic I had, uh, I had uh, suppose that I should spend maybe uh, one, one lecture and half, but I have only half lecture to do that. Uh, so it will be a very concise uh, uh, resume of, the, of what I had planned to explain. I prefer to finish 
the uh, channels and maybe uh, solve the exercises than to uh, uh, give you in a hurry what the, the difficult notion of, uh, of Kolmogorov complexity. Have you any questions? Could you please repeat last few sentences we got disconnected? Uh, regarding what uh, we shall do tomorrow? So what I was saying uh, is that uh, I am much slower than I had planned to. And so uh, the, uh, I had uh, uh, predicted that I, I could spend one lecture and a half to speak about uh, Kolmogorov complexity because Kolmogorov complexity is a difficult topic. But I have uh, not one lecture and half, I have half lecture remaining for the uh, Kolmogorov complexity. So uh, I'll give you a very uh, uh, short uh, resume of the idea of Kolmogorov complexity. And I prefer to finish somehow correctly the uh, uh, things about channels and uh, uh, instead of uh, giving in a hurry uh, the uh, notion of Kolmogorov complexity. Is it? Yes. Good. And anyway, the, the notes about Kolmogorov complexity will be uh, more uh, explicit because uh, I have uh, written the notes for one lecture and a half. But I, I cannot go through that. It's, uh, it's too long. OK. OK, so uh, is there any other question? Try to solve the exercises I have proposed to you. I, I am speaking, of, I'm speaking to students now. Try to solve uh, the uh, exercises. They are not difficult, but you, you must think about it. Questions? Okay, so if not, we stop here. Have a nice, good appetit. Appetit and thank you. 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 Why you upload? <laughs> I'll be here tomorrow anyway. Good.